Praise God. God is good. I don't hear you. God is good. And all the time. So today we are going to continue with our series on the church. Um, we started this series six weeks ago. So today is the seventh uh, part of the series. And um, we already covered a number of things. We covered the uh, the church as a people of God. We covered about people of the spirit. We covered about the church as a community, a church as a, as a mission. And last week we covered uh, a church as a generous people. And today we are going to cover um, a church as a people of prayer. So we're going to talk um, about prayer. And uh, I'm, I was very excited. Most of the songs we are singing today, we are pointing to this message. And um, maybe to give you a simple story of uh, some few things that happened in my life that strengthened my, my prayer life. Um, first of all, when I was growing up, I believe most of the Christians have the same experience. But I'm not going to talk about you, but myself. Amen? I used to pray to get answers. I used to pray in order to receive. So that is my experience. And I have very good examples when I was growing up. I remember I was about maybe 10 years old. I remember I was in grade 4, grade 5. When I was still, uh, you remember, I, I, was, I was a Catholic. So we used to have evening players on Sunday. So on Sunday, you find the, the kids. Here we are dismissing them to go to their classes. But in our church, I believe up to now, in some of the churches, you find the kids go to church on a, around 4 p.m. That's when the kids' uh, service is starting. So one of these days, um, we used to, to live just down the road, a place called Lugaro at the barracks, and we used to go to church in Kawe. So I grew up in this area. This is my, my area. And um, used to take a bus. By then, you used to take this Uda. And it used to be only one shilling to go from where I live to church. Sometimes we would walk, but I remember that day I had this one shilling and we were playing with our, you know, my friends. You know, there's this game you play with, with coins. And um, there was a big crack on the uh, the, play, the place we were, we were praying and my coin stuck there and it went down and there was no way we could get that coin. And I was wondering how am I going to go back home because you know on a Sunday the, the service finished after six, it's already dark. So um, I started praying and I remember that was the first time I felt that God can answer your prayer immediately because when we went to the service I remember vividly that the pastor asked a question. I even remember the question. I wasn't going to say that question, but I was the person who answered right. I had some balls and, uh, you know, I was very bold to raise my hand. And, um, and I answered it and, 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 and he, he reached up to his pocket and gave me a, a one shilling coin. And I was like, ah, as if he knew that I really needed that one shilling. And he never did that. I never remember anybody giving a shilling. And I felt, oh my God, God had answered my prayers. And the second thing that I remember that also I was praying when I was a kid, that I did not get, get, get uh, God did not answer until many years later. So uh, I remember when we were growing up, my dad was in the army. So he went to this course uh, on international relations. And one of the things we used to hear, or used to tell us when he came home, because sometimes he used to stay there. So when he came home, he was like speaking French, he was like doing different things. And one of the things is like one day, I might get an opportunity to go and work in another country as an ambassador or as a attache or something. So I was like, wow, this is what I want. Go live somewhere out there, you know, and, you know, it's going to be cool if we get that opportunity. So I started praying for my dad. I started praying for him every time, you know, I'll give my, you know, uh, offering and I'll say a prayer. God, help daddy to get that opportunity. I remember I was still a kid and 
never happened. That was in the mid, I think it was in early, mid, nine, I mean, 80s. And, 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 and back in the early, nine, actually in the early 2000s, end of 90s, 1999, 2000 is when my parents got this opportunity. By then I was already living in Europe, already had my life, and God answered that prayer. And it was not because he did not want to answer at the time I asked. He answered when the time was right. Because this was a time when my youngest, uh, two of our youngest brother and sister, our siblings, it was the time for them to go to university. Three of us were already in university and my dad was going to be retiring. My mom was going to be retiring. So I think uh, it would have been so different if they went earlier the way I wanted other than they went to the time that God predestined. And it was, it was a very, very good time. They spent those years out there. When they came back, they all retired. And I can see how that made their life strong uh, following that the prayers I had. So, 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 so something that um, I wanted to share with you to show that prayer works and God always answers prayers. Amen? So even we as Christians, today I want to bring back that, um, that message that we should be praying all the time. And prayer should not be limited only to get answered. One of the songs today was saying, here is my heart, Lord, speak what is true. That is a prayer. You just sit and say, God, just speak to me. That can be a prayer. We've been singing so many songs of praising, praising God for who he is, for what he has done in our lives. There are so many things that God is doing in our lives without even ourselves knowing, without even asking. Those are the things we need to pray for. So, um, in March, we had a series of spiritual warfare. And one of the, one of the, one of the part of that series I remember I preached in a Swahili service and Sheshi preached that day on the English service was resist with prayer. So when we were talking of the spiritual warfare, we talked about the full armor of God. So when we talked of the full armor of God is when, remember this was in the book of Ephesians, when Paul was in, in prison and he was encouraging the, 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 the church in Ephesus writing to them, giving them the encouragement and telling them, guys, we are fighting against the powers of the air, the darkness, the powers of the darkness, and you need to have a full amount of God in order to persevere in that fight. And he mentioned a number of things, a number of things, but the most important things at the end, he said, you have to pray. In everything you do, you have to pray. So you can all have all these other things, but without prayer, it, can be, it cannot be effective. So today we are also going to continue to see other reasons, other reasons um, to pray. Prayer can do so many things in our life. Prayer can heal the sick. Prayer can mend your marriage. Prayer can bring peace in your workplace. Even when your enemies are chasing after you, only through prayer you can have rest. You can have confidence to face the challenges in your, in your life. So, most of us have had the moments of sorrow in our lives. The challenges that comes with losing someone or losing something in your life. Some people have lost their businesses. Some people have lost um, their savings but only through prayer. So if you want, no matter what is going on through your life, no matter what you are up against, or no matter what has happened in the past, the only thing that can help you, the only thing that can bring peace in your life is prayer. So, Mother Teresa, in one of um, her courts, she said, prayer is not asking, but prayer is putting oneself in the hands 
of God at his disposition and listening to his voice in the depths of our hearts. So that's exactly what that song was saying. Here is my heart. Speak to me. Tell me what should I do. Sometimes we allow the world to tell us what to do and we don't sit quiet and say to God, um, is this right? Is this what you want me to do? We just get an idea, we run with it. One day I was preaching here and I said, that's, that's, that's what has happened to me. For the last five, seven years, I've been, uh, you know, independent, doing my own thing, running some businesses. I've invested so much. I think I'm, I'm not a good example in investing because I've invested in almost everything from fishing business with a boat going out in the sea, farming with cows and everything, hospital, fast food, just mention it, I'll be there. Campsites, I've tried everything. But what happened is that some of these things, I was just, it was just the spirit of the moment. It was something I hear from someone, I don't pray about it, I don't meditate to see if this is what God wants. It's like, oh, that's a great idea. There are so many great ideas. Even in the cryptocurrency, I invested in that too. So, so, so all these things, it's, it's, they're good things. There are people who are really blessed in those kind of businesses, but that's not what God wanted me to do. There are a few things that I really communicated with my wife, communicated with the elders. I say, I think I have this idea. Please pray about it. Let us pray about it and see what will happen. So some of these things, because you have the money, you have some capital, you know where you can get the capital, you jump, you run without praying, and then the results are always discouraging. Because God has a plan for you. So we need to be closer to him to know what he wants us to do. So today... We are going to, to look at three reasons to pray. We've, there are so many reasons, but it will take a number of days to finish them. So I'm going to concentrate on three main reasons. Ruth Bell Graham, this is the wife of um, the famous evangelist Bill Graham, once said she, she used to write a, a lot of poems, and she was also a reader, I mean a writer, and um, you know, she used to, to have some talk shows. So one of the things she said was, pray when you feel like it, for it is a sin to neglect such an opportunity. And pray when you don't feel like it, for it is dangerous to remain in such condition. Amen? So we are called to pray all the time. And one of the reasons, the first reason, the first reason that I'm going to mention today is to build our relationship with Jesus. This is the main one. I think this is one of the top reasons we should be praying. So I'm going to read from Ephesians chapter 3, verse number 14 to 19. This is the marvelous God's plan for the Gentiles. This is the same letter that Paul wrote to the, to the church in Ephesus when he was in prison in Rome. This is the same, same letter. Uh, in chapter 3, he's saying, For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long, how high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. This is a very powerful scripture. I would encourage you to go and read because it has a lot of stuff that are good in our life. So, 
Paul is starting by saying for this reason. So we need to know what reason. Because we have not read the beginning of the, the chapter. So when he say for these reasons, Paul, like other apostles, had a privilege to be entrusted with the revelation by the Spirit. And one of the revelations that Paul was entrusted with was the fact that now the Gentiles are receiving the gospel. And they are receiving it by faith. The revelation of that, the Gentiles are also part of God's plan. The Gentiles are also a part of the, 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 the family, the, 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 the family of Christ. So they are a member of the body of Christ. And they have the same access as the Jews or any other Christians to God. That's why he's saying for this reason, He's telling them that for these reasons, that now you have that access that's like anybody else. For this reason, he's trying to tell them that he's praying. Actually, I want you to imagine Paul in the, in the, in the prison cell. He's saying, he's praying while he's, 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 he's on bended knees. He's not just praying, he's saying, I'm on bended knees praying for you. So that God can strengthen you. Not only in the spiritual power, but in love and knowledge. So those are the three main things he's praying for. So that God can strengthen you in the spiritual power, in love and knowledge. So that you may have, first, the inner spiritual strength. So there are four things that he wants them to have. From verse number 16, when he says, I pray that out of the glorious riches, he may strengthen you in the power through the spirit in your inner being. So, the inner spiritual strength. So, when we talk of the spiritual strength, this is another sermon. There are so many things we have learned about the spiritual strength. Just, as, just to remind you, one of the things, um, the fruit of the spirit. These are the things that we can pray and we can have them. So, we talk of love. We talk of peace. We talk of kindness. We, thought, we talk of uh, gentleness. We talk of uh, self-control. So all these, we can only get them once we have that relationship with Jesus. So prayer can bring out that relationship. The second thing, the indwelling of Christ in our hearts. Many Christians, similar to, 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 to what uh, Trudy and Angie said when we were singing, that we, we just became Christian by default. Because our parents were Christians, we were born in the church, so we feel that automatically we are Christians. Automatically we have received Jesus, so automatically that we are saved. We don't confess that we are really into it. We are really um, have accepted Jesus in our life. So prayer can help us so that we can have the indwelling of Christ in our hearts. The power of God in our hearts. And this one is very important because without that you can come, you can sing, you can give, you can do everything, but if you don't have Christ in your heart it's a waste of time. So let us pray so that we can feel we can have this relationship that Jesus can be something, it's like your friend, it's like your body, like all the time you're with Jesus. It's established in your heart that you don't have to fight to pray. That it can be just automatic. You know, like I like those brothers and sisters that you just start talking to them and you say, you know what, I'm suffering about this. And you just straight say, let's pray about it. Without even thinking, that's automatically in their gene. So, we need to, to pray, not only for ourselves, but for everybody in this church, for our families, for our neighbors, for people who surround us in the workplace, for our enemies, so that they can have the, 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 the indwelling of Christ in their heart. Because Christ, to be in your heart, means peace. It means love. It means kindness. It means so many things 
that can bring peace in this world. So it's lack of the Christ in people's heart which cause all this havoc we have now. The, the third thing is the ability to comprehend all the dimensions of the spiritual realities. This scripture, the way it is written, is as if, uh, as if Paul is describing an object. He's saying how high and how deep, how wide and how long. It's like he's describing something, but here he's talking about the dimension of the spiritual realities. We have power in us because we have the Holy Spirit who is dwelled in us. There are so many things that we have the power to do through prayer, through faith. And, 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 and Paul is praying so that the, the, the church uh, in Ephesus to have that power so that they can experience. Um, we had a, a visiting pastor who preached a few weeks ago, author from South Africa, and he was trying to show us that most of the time this, these days we find that there are some church which are more into word and there are some church which are more in the spirit. And we need to have a church that is bringing those things together. So many people or so many Christians have never experienced any spiritual experience in their life. Like the spiritual move in their life, in their faith life. They know the word, they pray, they do everything, but they lack that spiritual experience. Because through these spiritual experiences when we can really say, uh, we can really experience how God operates, how God moves in our lives. In terms of healing, in terms of just bringing us closer to him, speaking in tongues, revelations. They are the gift of the Holy Spirit. These are the things that they can change the atmosphere when you pray. I know there are some people who are experiencing those things here in church. There are people who have experienced that, but there are people who have not. So prayer is something that can really strengthen you in that area. And number four is to have the knowledge of the love of Christ. So all these things, they strengthen our relationship with Christ. Build our relationship with Jesus Christ. The love, to have the knowledge of the love that surpasses everything. That if you understand how Jesus loves you, it's beyond even your understanding. That's what the Bible tells us. That's what Paul is telling us. But we need to have that knowledge. We need to test the love of God. We need to test the love of Jesus that died on that cross on that, that day for forgiveness of our sins. It's very, very important. In the book of James, verse number 4, chapter 8, the Bible says, Come near to God and he will come near to you. So let us go. Let us go close to, to God through prayer. And he will come close to us. Praying, you don't have to shout. You don't have to have specific hours. You don't have to, to complicate it. You don't have to be very religious about it. Just pray. Anytime you have, any moment you have. It can be in one minute. It can be in five seconds. It can be in three hours. You can fast for 21 days. You can fast for three days. Just pray. Whenever your heart pulls you to pray. Don't be so, you know, uh, religious about it. Sometimes we want even everybody to know that I'm praying today. Like this month, I'm just praying. Just don't, don't do that. Just have that relationship with God. When you are driving to school, or when you are taking your kids to school, or when you are driving to work, before you go to sleep, when you wake up in the morning, when you... Before presentation, I, I like to pray before presentations. You know, anytime you have an opportunity, say, God, be with me. God, thank you. God, help me. Sometimes you don't have time even to think what to pray. Just say, God, help me. That's what Peter said when he was about to sink, when he was walking in the water. Help me. That is prayer. 
even singing his prayer, the way we sing here. Don't sing because everybody is singing. Engage yourself in the conversation with Jesus, with God, through prayer. The second reason to pray that we're going to cover today is to help us to overcome temptations. I'll go straight to Luke 22, verse 39 to 40, and then verse 45 to 46. So Jesus went, to, went out as usual to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, pray that you will not fall into temptation. When he rose, verse number 45, when he rose from prayer and went back to the disciples, he found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. Why are you sleeping, he asked them. Get up and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. This was the time when Jesus was about to be caught by the soldiers. So this is where it all started. And Jesus knew what will happen. He knew what will happen. That was, that's why he was praying. But the disciples were not praying. They fell asleep. So when he says, pray so that you don't fall into temptation, what kind of temptation is he talking about? Jesus is talking about the temptation to abandon Jesus, to, to deny Jesus. Because when we feel that we're going to get into trouble, usually we fall into that temptation to save ourselves. So this is what happened. The disciples, some of them ran away, some of them denied Jesus' age. Who is he? I don't even know him. And he knew it. That's why he was saying, pray. Pray so that you don't fall into temptation. So every time even us as Christians... When we fall into temptations, um, we have to pray. First of all, let's pray so that we don't fall into temptations. Because falling into temptation, that means it's committing sin. That means we are denying Jesus. We are denying the work that he has done on the cross. It's like we are, we are, we are, we are, we are taking him back to the cross again and again and again. Because he has already taught what he wants us to do. So by falling into temptations, we are letting him down. It's like we are denying him. It's like we are saying, I don't know Jesus. So when we find ourselves exposed to temptations, we should pray so that God can uphold us up. Amen? So when we are tempted, we should not be discouraged. We need to pray. Temptations are all over in this world. And now even temptation have been brought out to our gadgets. It's sad. It's very, very sad that um, we cannot even protect our kids because everything is just very close to your hand. You find before sleeping, instead of sitting and talking, everybody is on the gadget. When you are sitting, having dinner, everybody's on the gadgets. Those are temptations. The gadgets have all, actually 99% of the things in the gadgets or in the world of social media and internet and everything. 99 things are the things of the devil. Just 1% contribute with the communication and good things. But 99 things. I was so overwhelmed when I heard the number of pornography websites in the internet. You're talking of billions. Billions. Not one million, not two million. You're talking of billions of websites. They pop in. You open your phone, they're just popping. The stories that we don't even have to hear. Because now everybody is bringing you all these kind of, of stories of the world. Like a lot of things that are surrounding you, you know. Even the groups in WhatsApp, they send you pictures you don't even want to see. All these is temptations. So we really need to pray so that um, we don't fall into temptation. 
It's not a sin to be tempted, but it's a sin to fall into temptation. Number three, we should pray to accomplish God's work. In John chapter 14, verse number 12 to number 14, the Bible says, Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things that, than those than this, because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask me in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in his, the Son. You may ask me anything in my name, and I'll do it. So, very briefly, what kind of work is, 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 is this scripture talking about? Because Jesus is calling us to do his work. A few weeks ago, as Trudy said, when on for offense, was preaching about the mission. This is one of the work that Jesus came, came to do. The mission. To reach out to the people who don't know the gospel. To reach out to the non-Christians. So this is one of the things that we are supposed to do as Christians. And we can only do that through prayer. This is one of the work that we can help to accomplish God's work. To bring the good news to the people who have not received out in prayer because we are fearful. We are not equipped. Even myself, I'm asking, how will I start? But once you pray about it, God opens the doors and you'll be surprised how easy it becomes to share your faith, to share um, what you believe to others, to share Jesus with people who have not received him. Other thing that Jesus was doing um, a number of things. Um, in Matthew 10, chapter 8, it said, Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, drive out demons. This is when was, he was commissioning um, the disciples. Say, go there, do this. Heal the sick. So we have that power in us to heal the sick, to drive out the demons, to raise the dead. But we cannot do that without prayer. So we as Christians have to rethink again our prayer life. Individual prayer life, but also corporate prayer life as a church. Do we pray for these things? Do we pray so that we can have the, 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 the power that God has given us? Prayer can do so many things and um, I want to I just want to, 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 to pray for every one of us here before we finish that God can really help us. God can really touch us so that we become more, uh, more, more people of prayer.